Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions. Uh, today, I have one of my uh, friends from Brazil. Uh, his name is Gentle. How are you doing, Gentle? I'm doing fine. And you, Jerry, how are you? I'm doing good. How's, uh, how's Brazil right now? Things are trying to go here. Yeah. It's true. going. Is COVID a big thing right now over there? Is, are you seeing a decrease in cases? Yeah, we're at the peak of COVID, but like for five months now. Yeah. Things are not that great. It's not great here either. A lot of people just aren't wearing masks, aren't doing their part, aren't being safe. And that's why COVID is still here, unfortunately. Yeah, here's the same. Yeah, people just don't listen. But, but anyway, so when did you, when and how did you become a Bon Jovi fan? All right, it was 2013, three, just by the time that Bridge left the band. I saw this, this picture of the clip of It's My Life uh, on Facebook. Then I went to see the music. Actually, I've never heard It's My Life. I've heard some songs of Bon Jovi, but okay. not the biggest song of them. <laughs> then I went to YouTube and found very amazing song then i start to listen to another songs and realized that i've already heard bon jovi since i was almost a baby there was a soap opera here in 2000, 2003 that had misunderstood as its soundtrack and i used it to listen to the song a lot when i was a kid then i was discovering another songs uh, because we can that was the new single the you give love a bad name live on the prayer i've already heard then i couldn't stop listening to bon jovi wow so what, what's your favorite <laughs> song it's actually actually it is i'll drive you home oh that's in my it's top not... five it's in my top five too yeah i remember listening it for the first time the album wasn't really hasn't been released yet how the tracks leak it on the internet. I heard, I can't help it. Yeah, I love <laughs> and that stuff too. <laughs> I've got Ghostbooks just by the introduction of the song. It became my favorite at that moment. Yeah, you know, it's, ama it's, it's probably my, like I said, it's one of my top five of all time favorite Bon Jovi songs, but it's also my favorite from This House Is Not For Sale album, you know? Yeah. I think when you listen to the lyrics, you know, what's so great about that song is that it can be interpreted in so many ways. You know, it could be like maybe John wrote about the band or it could have been about a relationship, could have been about a friendship. You know, it's all about longevity and always being there, even though new things will come and go, you know, you, that you're always yeah. there. That's exactly you know? how I see it. Yeah. So it's, it's a beautiful song. And, uh, you know, I, I I love it when he does it live. I was lucky enough to be able to see him do it on the cruise last year, and it just it blew me away. You know, amazing. Yeah, I was just so happy that I saw he singing this song during this Hampton Water live. Yeah, it was amazing to see it. Yeah, it, it gave me goosebumps when he started to sing that. You know, and, and I liked uh, Lorenzo's touch on the violin with that song too, which is you know really yeah. good you know it's it, it's definitely a beautiful song yeah and the way they do the ending is just amazing too by the last verse they don't complete the song they uh when the rest are gone and yep. stops yeah it's amazing yeah i love it but uh, yeah that's, that's probably the best song from this house um oh, <laughs> my laptop just uh <laughs> Um, so that brings us to the next thing is I think one of the biggest things we want to talk about today, which is today is the first day that the do what you can music video came out. What are your yeah. thoughts? I found amazing. The construction of the video is just great. Like he sings one thing and the video shows it. Uh, the bridge. They built a hospital on East Middle. They showed the, a hospital being built 
I saw Red Cross on the Hudson. There is a Red Cross on the video. I yeah. loved it. I just yeah. don't get every uh, landmark from New York because I don't know them. But it was really good. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, I'm glad you're about New York because it, I love the big tribute to New York, you know, because it's truly the best place in the United States, in my opinion. <laughs> um, but, you know, like you said, the, all the landmarks, you know, my favorite was when he did um, the mark, what do you call it? The I'm lost for words right now. The Diana Broadway, the Long Acre Theater, where yeah. they showed John there. And uh, it's funny because we, me and my uh, my fiance, we went and saw the Diana musical uh, when they were doing like, uh, I don't want to say rehearsals, but they were kind of doing plays for, sure. for the public. And uh, we went and I'm glad we did because we went to the second to last show out of, I think, five shows. And then, you know, COVID hit. And uh, so, you know, we're thankful that we were able to go and see it. But uh, but anyway, so I was glad to see that like John paid a little tribute to David in that video and showed him in front of Diana. Yeah, that was something I wasn't expecting to see at yeah. all. I was yeah. like expecting to see the band from home, but they didn't appear. That's yeah. okay, but I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, you know that that's the one downfall too. Is you know I, I'm not a music video engineer or anything like that, but one thing that I didn't. You know, I, I love the video. I thought it was perfect. Um, the only thing that I wish they would have added, though, was having the band in the video. You know, I think it would have been cool if they would have shown, you know, because they kind of showed, you know, I know John's from Jersey, but John also lives in New York. You know, it kind of showed John's community, you know, but yeah. didn't show Phil's it, community, Tico's, David's. You know, it would have been kind of nice to see all the band members kind of visit their community and walk around and, you know, I know it's a lot to ask for, but I, I thought it would have been cool to include the band like that. Yeah, that's the thing the fans want the most. Let's see the yeah. band on the clip, not just John, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was, a, it was a good video. You know, and what gave me goosebumps, too, is seeing, you know, a lot of, you know, it's not acting. You know, like a lot of the, when they shown the, the daughter visiting her grandmother at the nursing home with, through a window you know and then putting their hands up to the window or you know the teenage girl graduating high school she's wearing a cap but then she's wearing a mask yeah you know? that they mix it with some personal videos on that clip the graduation was one of those and there was this moment i don't recall but they also did like an old tv news thing the beginning the yeah. effect that they put on the screen. And there's one thing on that video. Uh, right after the bridge, when he goes back to the chorus, the vibe changes on that video. I don't know if you noticed that. It goes, it's going, we're leaving this thing. It's not good. Let's try to keep it up. After the bridge, they just, it's a lifting up moment. John yeah. appears happier than in any video, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I think when you listen to the song, you know, and the video really... <laughs> Sorry. I have laptop my, too. My, my laptop died, so I'm on my phone today, and it, I have it set up, and it keeps dropping. But, <laughs> um, but I think the music video really complements the, uh, the video, or the video complements the song, whatever. You know... I, I think it's one of those songs that lets you in on how terrible the world is right now, but we're all in this together, yeah. you know, and that, and that kind of gives you a sense of hope, uh, a sense that we're going to make it through and we all got to do our part and be a helping hand. Yeah. There's a part in the video that shows this phrase, uh, we're going, we're going to get through this together. Not the lyrics in the video. We're stronger together. Oh, the yeah, part yeah, yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, but it was a great video. And, uh, you know, I think it's a very fitting song right now. So I'm glad that they, you know, chose it as a single. Yeah, 
in the future, I think this song is going to be very dated. Like, all right, that doesn't work right now, but it's what we are living, so it's very special right now for us. Yeah, you know, what, what brings me, you know, to our next point that you and I wanted to talk about is the 2020 album. And, and, and like you just said, I, I think the 2020 album itself is just going to be a, a release, you know, like, like you and I both know that they're doing uh, recording right now in Nashville for TV yeah. and internet for the album being played in its entirety. But I think that 2020 is just going to be an album release because I don't see touring happening next year. I just don't, especially Bon Jovi. I don't see where we are right now in the world. I don't see us going from right now to jam packed arenas and stadiums next year, you know? So I, I don't see the band torn until 22. And so I think by the time that comes, you know, John's going to be already writing another album and then doing a tour that way. What do you think? I think he's going to be planning the next box set. It's going to mm -hmm. be 40 years almost. Yeah. That's going to be weird to see. Weird, not weird. Mistaken here. Yeah, that's okay. It's going to be good to see. <laughs> yeah. I, what here's my my thing is is I think they're going to release 2020 in October, do a little bit of promotion with it. But, you know, I think it's just going to be like one of those albums that you just put out there, done. And then I think John's going to start writing a new album, a new album in 22, maybe the end of next year tour an album in 22 and then they'll do another tour in 23 but it'll be in celebration of 40 years you know so it'll, it'll be kind of like what they did with the circle and greatest hits in 2010 2011 they kind of combined the circle tour with the greatest hits tour you know yeah. so i think that's what we're going to get in 22 and 23 and they already have a lot of material to that right even from yeah. 2028 they recorded mm, 2006, 2004 songs. We all know 12 of them. Yeah. Well, now we know some. We know uh, there's one, Fate of Our Time. Yeah. Which is the 13th one. Um, Actually, I want to ask where did that come from? <laughs> they released it the is, video, then appeared well, that song. <laughs> I, I saw it pop up on Wikipedia last week. And, you know, Wikipedia isn't always 100% accurate. Yeah. And uh, so I waited and then I started to see it on Google. I started to see it on iTunes, Amazon. And iTunes actually took it back down. But it looks to be that there's going to be a special digital release, which will include, let me back up. So Japan, see, here in America, we're only getting the 10 tracks. And yeah. it excludes Love Can and Shine. Japan is getting the 12 track album that includes Love Can and Shine. But now there seems to be a special digital release where it'll include uh, 13 songs, which will include Love Can, Shine, and a demo of Fate of Our Time. And obviously, all the other ones like Limitless and Do What You Can. Do What You Can Acoustic is also going to be on it. Um, and then all the other basic 2020 tracks. Yeah, I think this is the first time they put a demo song on a regular album. Is that right? Yeah. You know, and maybe that's a mistake too. Maybe maybe it's a, a finished song. Who knows? But either way, you know, it's a uh, new song. I'm looking forward to it. And it must be that good that John's going to put it on, even if it's just a demo. And they have a good time choosing good songs like bonus, bonus tracks, right? Like this house not for sale. My favorite songs are bonus tracks from the album, not the standard standard ones. Yeah, I'm on the same page with you, buddy. I, <laughs> I you know, this house is a great album. Don't get me wrong, but I would have taken off, you know, uh, come on up to our house. I'll hear the king. I would have take those songs off, and I would have put "Good Night New York," "Color Me In," "I'll Drive You Home." Color Me Is Amazing. What's that? 
Color Me In and Touch of Grey are amazing and they're just yeah. very specific songs. Walmart and Japan releases, right? Yeah, uh, entirely. You know, and so it's those, it, it amazes me when I listen to those you know, outtakes. You know, those four just deserve to have been on the album. You know, they were so good. But, uh, but you know how it is with John and putting song. You know, we almost didn't get living on our prayer, you know? Yeah, is, that's a know, fact. <laughs> or always, you know, always was even one of those songs that John just was going to put on a shelf and forget about, you know? Because he, he originally wrote that for a movie, Romeo is Bleeding. And then he didn't the like it. You, you, you know, what's that? The movie wasn't that great. So he just forgot the song, wanted to forget, right? Well, he wrote it, I think, in end of 93, early 94, for a movie Romeo was bleeding. And uh, he, he wrote it, recorded it, and uh, he saw the movie, read the script, didn't like it, and uh, said, no, he didn't want to put the song on the album. And then so he was going to put it on a shelf, and then I don't, I don't know if it was Obi or some other producer who was helping on the Crossroads album, which was the first greatest hits album, and they were like, you should put this on the crossroads. And John thought it was going to be a fluke. And uh, what do you know? It, it's the biggest selling single in the band's career. You know, and it's obviously a huge fan favorite. It's just a huge song. And, you know, so point taken, you know, sometimes John's not the greatest with picking <laughs> what songs go and stay off an album. But he also creates them, so he gets the, the say, you know. But, yes. Yeah, but you know, uh, as diehard fans, you know, we love the, the outtakes and the deeper stuff. Yeah, I still don't know why Stay was put aside of Crush, Crush. for example. Yeah. You know, it's an amazing so many, song. Yeah, there were so many great outtakes on Crush. You know, you had Stay, Neurotica, I Can Make a Living Out of Loving You, even though that was put on the UK edition. Uh, what else was off of that? drawing a blank on some welcome yeah, to the good so times many... we're welcome yeah. to the good times as also yep neurotica i think i mentioned neurotica but so um but let's get back to the 2020 album so what are your thoughts on 2020 it's gonna be a dated album for most of the songs and lots of fans are going to com are going to complain that's the thing <laughs> Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. You know, I, I got to the point where I, you know, when I hear other Bon Jovi fans complain, you know, I just, you know, I understand people, you know, an artist has to grow and, and is going to change. And you can't expect John to write songs like Bad Name and Bad Medicine. You know, it does, he would look goofy. You know, there's other bands out there, and no disrespect to them, but like bands like Motley Crue and you know all those '80s, all other '80s hair bands, which are great bands, but they're still writing songs about sex and drugs and partying all night long, and they're like 60. You know, it, it looks silly, you know. So I don't want John to see write. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want, I want, to, and I think John's in a great place right now. I love what he's writing. You know, I love the social conscious stuff. You know, stuff that really truly matters. And uh, I think he sounds great. I think his songwriting is great, and the music is great. You know, the whole band itself is in, is is in such a good place right now. These last four songs for me are amazing. Even "Unbroken" that people used to smash it. Because, oh, it's a slow song, shit, whatever. I think it's really good. Yeah. And yeah, I've loved every song that we've heard so far. You know, I've even heard Lower the Flag, and Lower the Flag is beautiful. You know, we, we've heard Unbroken, we've heard Limitless, we've heard Do What You Can. You know, we've heard a snippet of Beautiful Drug. You know, so I, I think this album's going to be promising. You know, I don't. I don't expect the band to sound like they did back in the eighties. You know, I think the way that they sound now is is amazing. You know. Yeah. I think and, they're uh, gonna go pop from here, right? A little pop. What's that? I think they're going. They're gonna in a direction more popper from now on. Those like, these do rock songs, but rock pop. 
Yeah, you know, like, I, I, I'm a huge fan of pop rock. You know, I love pop music. I love rock music. And it's great that my favorite band does that, you know, pop rock sound. Um, yeah, my only complaint about these last four songs are is on Limitless, the solo that it doesn't have. Yes. That's my only complaint. I'm with you. You know, I think uh, Limitless is a great song. You know, one... The verses were amazing. It was in your face and it was, you know, boom, 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 you know, but the chorus kind of lacked the umph to it, you know? Yeah. Still a great song. I, I love it. I just wish the chorus had more of the in your face type sound. Uh, and then, like you said, too, a solo, you know, I, I think just judging from this house and what we've heard so far in 2020, I, I, I feel like there's a fear of having a guitar solo because a it's not what you hear on the radio. Even other rock bands aren't even having guitar solos anymore. It's just, I don't know why it's not a thing anymore, but it should be because it's a rock band, Yeah, you know, and B I think because of Richie being gone and Phil in, but I tell you, Phil's a hell of a guitar player and I think would make incredible guitar solos, but I know there are, quite a few guitar solos on this new album so i'm looking forward to hearing those yeah about phil x uh he already said a couple a couple of weeks ago i think that he was working on this house not for sale he did i think eight or nine takes of the guitar solo and joe was like wait 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 you're giving me too much of good stuff let's take that let's take let's take the beginning of this one, the end of this one, and put something in the middle. And then came up with the final solo. I simply love that he wanted more Van Halen, Van Halen. Yeah. A solo from that song. That's what I'm looking for in Beautiful Drug. Phil X yeah. said he went full Phil X on that solo yeah. solo. I think there's good stuff coming. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I do, too. And, you know, I, I love seeing Phil on stage, too. You know, he has a lot of creativity to the songs. And so it's kind of it's going to be interesting to see because this is kind of like his first album where he actually plays more guitar because on this house, Shanks did a lot of more of the guitar work, which I disagree with. I think Phil should have had that spot. But yeah. I guess on this album, Phil has more of an input and a more guitar solos and you know so forth yeah and i think he's gonna do something great also on blood in the water i'm yeah, really looking I, forward to the song yeah i think so that's I, like a whole uh jam session too i think that's like a nine minute song i think it's gonna be bigger 10 yeah does it ten, you know give or take it was one side of the lp at the beginning, the first track list is just side A, B, C, and side D. Only Blood in the Water. It must be a really big song. Yeah, I think it's Blood in the Water that's going to be the 10-minute song, which is great because you don't see any band do that now. And, you know, the only 10-minute Bon Jovi song that we have is obviously Dry County. So it's going to be really interesting to see and hear this new song and I think it's going to be I think it's going to be one of those songs that you really get to see Tico and David and Phil even Hugh really spotlight you know yeah, I hope so <laughs> yeah you know and to even see this live I, which you know I'm hopeful you know next tour whenever that'll be seeing that live is going to be great yeah do you have an idea when the show is going to come out this one that they are recording right now. Right now, um, I bet you they're they're actually recording it tonight, which today is Wednesday the twenty fifth. Um, they're recording it tonight, I guess, and um, I bet you it'll because obviously they can't air it before the album releases because they don't want to give all the all the songs away. But I bet you it'll either air on release day or it'll be you know the following week. But I bet you that'll be used to help promote the album. That, that's my my guess. You know, I don't see them because the album's going to be out in five weeks from Friday. So I think we'll get five weeks. <laughs> What's that? 
Alright, five weeks. Five weeks. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> but it'll be it'll be great for us because you know, every time I've heard it now, besides What About Now, because they were already torn What About Now album when the album came out, but I always love being able to buy the album and think, oh my gosh, this this would sound amazing. And you kind of envision what this will look and sound like live. And so with his 2020 album, it's going to be great because we'll get to hear the album for the first time and then see how the songs are performed with the band. Yeah, yeah that's going to be great to see. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and Dave, he's recording right now the Diana Music Sprite. Yeah. He's not so, the, the show. So it's sad because, uh, you know, and, it, it, you know, these guys, they probably have things scheduled a year in advance, you know. So I, I think Dave already had this kind of plan because originally, beginning of the year, when Diana was getting recorded, or you know, built, um, you know, the band was going to be releasing the album in May. They were going to be torn in May and June and July, June and July. And then, so obviously David had August, September. I bet you they had everything scheduled for David to do this already in August, you know, but then obviously things changed and, you know, you got to think of all the other people that have to record Diana as well. You know, David just can't back out of it. Yeah, so I thinking think back in why. time, thinking yeah. back in time, things were really close at the beginning of the year. Felix was touring, David was with Diana's musical, yeah. and Bujov was promoting, John was promoting the new yeah. songs. Yeah, so you know, I, I can't blame Dave for not wanting or for not being able to be there because you know, he had this whole Diana thing scheduled, so it'll be weird not seeing him with the, the TV show or, you know, whatever. Um, but so I guess they got someone from the Kings of Suburbia, John Solo band uh, on it. So it, it'll be interesting. Yeah, talking about Kings of Suburbia, what do you think about John covering Black Eyed Peas? I loved it. Um, <laughs> when John, when John said that, and I've seen, K, I've seen him in KOS several times over the years. And so when they said, when he said that they were going to do some hits, I was like, okay, they're going to do like, which I love, you know, like old time rock and roll, Pretty Woman, Under Pressure, Baba, you know, all those songs that they always do. I was so thinking I was that. expecting it that night. And then all of a sudden we got uh, The Killers, Mr. Brightside, which was great. And then we saw. Um, there was also uh, Here Comes I, the Sun. I had a feeling. And yeah. I loved it. You know, just seeing John, you know, through the entire show and the after party, just seeing John so happy and having fun, you know, like when he was singing, I got a feeling he didn't know the second verse and he's like, or the chorus. He's like, oh, somebody oh, singing the chorus. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it was so great seeing that because I think we all as Bon Jovi fans needed to see that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it was an amazing concert that that night yeah and you know and like you said that i drive you home i was so glad that they did that you know especially that you know the beginning where he's like one two three and then they hit it and then uh lauren's violin work on that was spectacular oh you know? is amazing on that song yeah so yeah so i was glad that we got to see you know two songs we've never seen john cover before you know And I hope in the future, when we do see them again live, that he'll do those again because they were so... Like, even they his cover... Mm -hmm. I've always said this. And I don't say it because Bon Jovi is my favorite band or John's my favorite singer, frontman, whatever. It's amazing. He can touch any song, anybody else's song, and he makes the sound a hundred times better. You know, perfect yeah. examples are Mercy from Duffy, Pretty Woman, Hot Legs, I got a feeling, Mr. Brightside, you know, the, the list goes on, you know. Old Time Rock and Roll, I love when he sings that song. Oh, I love Old Time Rock and Roll. He's, he does a great job at that, but, you know, so more, it, it, I wish he did more Vertigo from U2. Yeah, that was he not too bad. He did once, I think. It was really great to see that. Yeah, yeah. One that I really love in this is um, Mercy. Uh, from Duffy, he did it in uh, 
during the Lost Highway tour. I think he did it during I'll Sleep When I'm Dead. You know, you got me begging here for mercy. You know, you never heard that one? I remember. I think I'm, I've heard that before. I think I've heard. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, some other good ones, too. Obviously, Hallelujah. You know, that's a fan favorite that John does. You know, seeing him perform that is just incredible. Um, he did Under Pressure one time. That was amazing. Yeah, the pressure is very good. Yeah. Uh, he stopped doing stopped doing Hallelujah 2012, right? Mm -mm. I don't recall he doing that after. He did it on 2013 tour. And then he's he didn't do it on this house tour, but he did it solo over the last years. He actually did it on on the cruise last year. Oh, solo. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. so he he still does it. Um. I think it's one of those songs that will never, that he'll never stop covering, and you know, live at least. Um, yeah. That. So. <laughs> but um, so that kind of wrapped things up. I think I think we talked about a lot of cool things, and uh, it was uh, one last question. Did you go? You've seen the band live, right? Yeah, one time only. Which tour? Because we last care year. Last year? Okay, where did it you was see him on, at? In the first time they went to Recife. It was on the last five tour shows. Right. They last went year. to Brazil. Yeah. How was that? How'd you like that? It was amazing. We planned a flash mob there. Wow. I think we got uh, 3,000 balloons, red balloons on the stage. Wow. It was really great. And I could see Dave singing in his arms. I think it was the first time in a long time that he did that, singing these arms during the show. So the best, one of the best days of my life, of for sure. Yeah. What was it? You know, what was it like? Because you you said you became a fan in 2013, so it was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, six <laughs> years. I had to count there. It was six years that you've been a fan, and you haven't been able to see them for six years. I mean, what was it like for you just to see them? come on stage for the first time and see them in, in real life. Yeah. Uh, as, a coin, as a mere fact, it was raining the day, so I don't know what I had in my face, if there was tears, sweat, or rain. All three. It was just Combo all three things mixing. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, I couldn't... You know, there's, there's no better feeling than seeing your favorite band, especially a band that you look up to and listen to every day and you know, singing little songs with your favorite band and it's other... funny that exactly two years before they were here to tour on Sao Paulo and Rock and Rio, and I could watch Rock and Rio through TV, and I was like, oh man, wish that two years from now, that's the time that they take to come back. And I could see them, and then it happened, and I was like, thank God. <laughs> I yeah. believe that's finally happening. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, I'm glad you're able to see them, and hopefully, God only knows when we'll be able to see them again. But uh, yeah, our time will come. So. Hopefully. <laughs> well, gentle, thank you for coming on today. It was great to kind of, you know, chat. I, I know you and I we we kind of chat on Instagram quite a bit every day, but um, it was kind of nice to be able to video chat and kind of talk a little more about things, which is pretty cool. Yeah, sure. Peace. So, well, I hope you stay safe, man. Take care, okay? You too. <laughs> yeah. Bye, buddy.